anything with any of these that you guys are picking up? The camping goes in space, Belgium. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, a lot of these floral notes can come from um, some of those yeast varieties. So something like a Saison, you might see it like this floral, delicate um, type aromatic, but it can be coming from other other places. Um, what about the time? What are you guys getting from that one? Black licorice, kind of, yep. Very herbal, very vegetative, vegetative. What? You think it's on the book? Say something about that time? Yes. Like I said, I'm sure you guys there's a savory quality to time. Savory, yep, yeah, definitely. Anything surprising? Like I said, I, I have complete faith that you guys have probably smelled a lot of these things before, but just kind of want to bring it to the forefront and make you really think about kind of what they smell like. Okay. Um, we are going to talk about um, some. Okay. We're going to talk about some yeast profile. So um, we'll go over some of more of the ester ones. So pear canned pineapple. Um, a lot of the more fresh pineapple can either come from pineapple juice. So a lot of times you'll get those. I mean, it's a very distinct like can't pine. Canned pineapple and fresh pineapple are two very different things to me. Um, and a lot of times you'll pick up the, uh, various yeast strains, like things in like maybe Saison or Belgian, that have that canned pineapple aromatic. And if you guys need more plates or more spoons, let me know. If you guys want to start filtering up to grab dinner as well, we hand out all the yeast flavors you can't you have. Yeah, you have to go. Go least. These are two I was supposed to pass out the hops to. So uh, lemongrass is just a grassy, so this is a dandelion leaf. Uh, again, you don't, you can, you don't have to eat that. I was just at the start, I was like, this is a thing people eat? Why have you ever eaten But definitely that, like very earthy, uh, fresh cut grass, um, long clipping type note to it. Now I want is lemongrass. Which I didn't know was like a thing. Like I, I like always smelled it in beer, but I, for some reason I thought it was just like a made thing people put candles until I saw the store. And I was like, oh yeah, this is real. Um, if you want to rub them together too, so that I didn't get until I started like putting it up and like peeling things off of it. I didn't want to like say chew because I've never done it before, so I would be like, you should eat it, and then tell me what it tastes like. Is it like lemongrass? Tastes like lemongrass, right? So again, these are two things that you'll see in uh, some of the hot varieties. All right, that's going around some of the yeast esters that I passed out. So again, um, yeast have very uh, distinct compartments. So something like a uh, fruit-like characteristics, so like a canned pineapple, you get a lot of delicate hair, uh, maybe some delicate apple type notes in some of those. I 
and yes. there is always such like a delicate flavor <coughs> that gets worn out in so many beers. Yeah, a lot of times I'll, I'll get pear and I'll be able to identify as a, like some sort of ester, but I won't necessarily be able to put my finger on it until you really sit down and think about it. Like, well, that is like a very delicate Bartlett type pear juice. So this one too is it's pepper, so obviously it'll probably make you sneeze if we take a big sniff of it, but again, um, things you find in some of these profiles, again, like say dumb, it's gonna have a peppery type note to it. Oh, that was smart. I was like trying to peel it. Uh, clove too, so obviously you guys know that um, a lot of the half of Hefeweizen type beers have that clovey, I was equated with like Indian cigarettes, earthy, musty type phenolic note. Um, I think you guys are used to, so again, I'm sure you guys all know what gum smells like, um, but we were just kidding about this. Sometimes you get those half bites and you're like, there's no way this can smell like gum, but if you smell the gum, you're like, oh, that's actually like something that's very, very present in a lot of those styles. I should have like opened all this before. I was like good about cutting stuff up, but I'm like, oh, let's figure the rest out later. Um, and then also anise, so if you guys have never smelled it before, a very black licorice type aroma to it. It's a little harder to get is sulfur type notes, um, like the very uh, rotten egg, hair perm. Um, to me, it smells like multivitamins. When I was in the store, multivitamins are really expensive. So I, I was like, I don't want to buy all these multivitamins and throw them away. So this is full of acid. So if anybody wants full of acid, um, don't eat these. I mean, you can if you want to, but that very, um, like, it's a very specific multivitamin type aroma. Um, that can come across from some yeast sulfurs. But it's like, it's very, like, like once I smelled, like I was going through this classes in the sensory department at Miller Coors and someone said multivitamin, I was like, I don't really get it. And then I went home and smelled multivitamins and now like every time I smell it, I know that's coming from a yeast sulfur. Um, the other ones that are kind of hard to find examples of are the wild beast characteristics. So again, uh, in a lot of your flatter style, um, your uh, lambics, your gooses, um, you'll get a lot of these characteristics, but obviously in the store I wasn't able to find things like horse blanket, mousey, things like that. Um, but um, a lot of the phenols, so like a chlorophenol, band-aid type smell, which you'll not only see in wild beers, but also some English style cider. So brown slime to me smells like this band-aid. Um, again, don't eat these. Lots of red and brown Yeah. Yep. It's delicious. I did get that one. Brown Yeah, it exists. It exists? So you know, so that, that very band-aid hospital, it, to me it smells like a dentist office kind of. Um, we equate that with uh, chlorophenol. Um, and again, it's found in a lot of English style ciders, a lot of uh, wild type beers. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it was hard to find examples of this because I was like, well, I'll say like go to my grandma's forest barn and like steal one of her blankets. I'm happy to find this. steal your grandma's blankets. My great grandma. Hey, Mustang Sally, I'm gonna steal some of your horse blankets. I'm right back. Your grandma seemed really Mustang Sally. She's Sally, but she rides horses, so I always call her Mustang Sally. And also, she really likes that song. Um, this last one, which I'm sure you smell, um, is vinegar. So a lot of that acetic, 
uh, type thing you'll see obviously in a lot of um, spontaneously fermented type beers. Um, the acetobacter gives off this vinegar type aroma to it. Um, you'll also smell this in some dirty draft line, so I'm sure during off flavors they'll talk about this too, but um, a lot of these flavors can be good or bad flavors. They can be found from yeast or hops or a combination of the two. So again, this is just more of getting you guys to be able to pull apart those different flavor profiles. Um, and this is something too, the more you do it, the better you'll be at it. So um, your homework is to go home and drink beer and think about the different flavor profiles. Uh, if I had to give homework or get homework, it'd be beer tasting. Um, do you guys have, have any questions at all about anything that we've smelled or tasted or anything um, that you didn't really know was coming from yeast and now it kind of makes a little bit more sense? I think you explained it, Asterisk was helpful. Yeah, so I feel like Asterisk is a, a term that a lot of people like know that it's a thing but don't really know what it is. So people will be like, oh, this is so estery. But when you start to break down exactly what estery is, you know, is it hair like? Is it floral? Is it banana? Is it, you know, uh, peach? Is it so being able to talk a little bit more eloquently and a lot more um, kind of pinpoint uh, will help out a lot. But yeah, I was. Yeah, people are like, oh, this is so ester. I'm like, what kind of ester is it? Is it bubble gum? Is it, you know? Um, so I feel like a lot of times people throw that out. Okay, now that I've made you guys eat and smell a lot of gross stuff, um, I want to taste some beers together and see if we can pick out some of those individual flavors that we just saw in some of these different styles. So you have three cups in front of you. And I saw that you brought up an opener, which is great because I didn't. So. <laughs> yeah, and it's a super polar. like, do I hate black liver? So I can smell that thing from like a mile away and I can absolutely hate it. I don't trust people that like the black jelly beans in the Eastern Canada. So we'll pour this. Um, last week you guys learned to taste here like a pro-ish, maybe, kind of, sort of. Um, so we'll kind of go through um, kind of uh, tasting together and see if we can't pick out um, some of the things that we were just talking about and then also be able to kind of identify what those flavors are and where they might be coming from. I don't know how well some of these are going to go with tacos, but we'll give it a try. Everything goes with tacos. Everything goes with tacos. I'm just prepping you guys for tomorrow. Okay. Are you guys picking up anything aromatically in this? Lemon. Lemon, yep. A little lemon peel. Lemon peel. A little bit of bubble gum. Definitely getting that bubble gum. That's uh, bubble gum. Guacamole. <laughs> oh. You know what? <laughs> be um, like a touch of clove touch or of clove. some kind of like savory warming spice. Yep. A little undertone of banana. <clears throat> banana, yep. I spilled clove all over my hand, so I like can't tell if it's like my hand or the beer that I'm smelling. <clears throat> Alright, what about the taste? It's tons of banana. Tons of banana, definitely. Where do you think that banana might be coming from? Definitely some of the yeast, yeah. What else are you guys getting? Probably bubble gum. Bubble gum? Citrusy. Citrusy clove. Citrusy clove. So all things that are probably come from yeast. Can you guys tell me anything about the mouth bill that might be in this from the taste? You guys picking up any of those flavor characteristics from running the molds we tasted earlier? Dry. Dry. Yeah, water cracker. Definitely. Right now, yeah. A little bit of the water cracker right in there. So so not super earthy, but like a very delicately biscuit dry. bread. Dry. dry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> Get a little of that popcorn kernel from the wheat. A little bit of popcorn kernel, yep, definitely. So part of the exam will ask you, it'll give you a style and be like, um, 
tell me about the style and the flavor descriptor. So kind of keying in on some of those things and kind of bringing them around, uh, being able to talk about them. Um, it's very important to the test. So it's kind of why I'm like fishing for things because you'll need to know it. They'll ask you for the style mm -hmm. it, and then you have to write the descriptor. They'll give you a style. Oh, they'll give you a style. So they'll say, here's your style. Tell me ADB, SRM, IBU. Tell me about historical origin. Give me commercial examples. Tell me about flavor descriptors. Tell me about any special brewing process that might take place. Typically one of the essays, right? Typically one of the essays, yep. OK. Dry air shell. Yours is dry air shell. Yeah. Mine was a Belgian wet, and I was like, yes. I was like, let me tell you about Belgian wet. <laughs> Couldn't be a more perfect example for me. Okay, um, this next beer is one of my favorite beers too. I'm like super prejudiced when I do these because I just do all my favorite things. Um, so this is a celebratory Dachenbach. So same thing, let's uh, pour it, let's kind of go through it together, see if we can pick up any of those components that we were just talking about in this beer. because it's coming through in the original malt that's used too. So we tasted some of that black prince and you, aromatically you guys are starting to pick up some of that roasty, astringent, burnt type note to it. So definitely coming from both places. It kind of like the black currant. Definitely that black currant type note to it, yep. This is one they like to use on the test on it too. So good to familiar familiarize yourself familiarize yourself with it sorry okay uh, I have one more sample for you um, I like this one because it's super complex um, you pick up a lot of characteristics that you don't pick up in a lot of other places so this is a Rogenbach um, Flanders red style beer um, I really like open it though because I get really scared of forks <laughs> I think it's interesting how um, some of these like, classic style beers keep coming up in this class. It's probably the third or fourth time we've been celebratory. And oh, have you really? Oh, yeah. Second or third time we've had run block. If I can get this run block, I'll pull for it. Shake it first. NASCAR 500. Give it to Wanga. That was one of the commodities beer guys. So we like to use them. Oh, the Sabre. 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 
Yeah. It'll show you how it's about done. Is it a knife? I got a knife. I have a saber. Saber? Jesus. Saber. 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 That is the official world yeah, class that, that's, 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 Yes. Or did you find a three liter of Sammy? No, it doesn't exist anymore. What? We got her. Trying to find three liters. We believe in you. Three liters of Sammy for one at uh, your crown. They sell already? They sold it two years ago, they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I saw in that. We, were we checked the crown inventory. And I said, So pissed. Who else knows? Do you know? You guys know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean worse than those? They were never from last year. I don't know. I told you one of them. So, Chris, did you take a Universe 6 liter? Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go. Oh, we can do some pulley order. We still have them. Yeah, let's definitely get them out of our inventory instead of buying <laughs> buying Tato or whatever that. Also, it's like, you know, 40% cheaper. Do we want to do with Finamon or do we want to do. Uh, uh, yes. Is there a. No, 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 the reserve. The yes. reserve. reserve all Both? Yeah, I don't, I don't really see what the question is. I don't understand why this is an either or. I expect you made six liters to be there? Where, where is, I, I don't have any three liters. Three liters. Three liters. Three liters. You think that one of bring those in? There's one of you guys. Oh, yeah. Why not? I don't know. Do you know how long I have that? Are you there with that glass? Is going to be funny to a six liter parat? That was a nine liter bottle. Nine, nine liter. Bottle. That was ridiculous. Yeah, the last one when we put it on sale for employees, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you were telling me that. Yeah. So I guess it's a little less exciting to know that you guys have had these like already during this class. That's great. Um, so no, no, it's 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 a drone box and you can learn everything we've learned. It's been a few weeks, so like to okay. visit it and do stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Um, these two are, are very classic examples of style, so I like to bring in, I'm sure you guys are all working for the app. Yeah. On the bottom of it, it has classic examples, and these two are ones that they call it all the time. That one I know they've used in the test before, so I always like to bring it in, in this kind of thing. This um, is a good reminder. Okay, uh, this last pair I have, so let's quick go through it. Again, kind of, let's smell it together and see what we're getting. It's like five minutes from my house. A little bit of a seat. A little bit of acetic, a little bit of that vinegar, yeah. that apple cider vinegar kind of smell. Or fruit. rice vinegar. Yeah. Fruity. Fruity? What kind of fruit? Red apple. Oh. Red apple. Tart cherry skin. Tart cherry skin. skin. Yeah. Not, not the skin. Not skin. <laughs> apple skin. Apple skin. Apple skin. Oh. I, I was picking up very quickly. Skin. That's a great one. Yeah. Skin. skin. Yeah. Skin. yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little egg over there. Face. Yeah. Smells like cheek. There's a lot of jokes. Smells like cheek. Human jowls. Yeah. My base. Raspberries. Raspberries. Trying to push through the lamp shade. That's just really rude, like human skin lampshade. I am gonna say I wouldn't suggest using it, but if you use it, they might give you credit. Partial credit. Partial credit. Or what about the flavor? What are we picking up? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of dark fruits. Are very <coughs> <and> raspberry. <coughs> yeah. Don't do that. Apple skins. Yep, apple skins. A lot of sourness, right? I'm getting a lot of tart, a lot of that like um, salivating, like in your back uh, jaw. <coughs> anything else you guys are getting in here? Can you tell me anything about the mouths they might have used? You say vinegar? Yeah. Yep, definitely. A little bit of molasses. A little bit of the molasses, right? So we know that this is typically aged for a couple of years. Yeah, so we'll that oxidation coming out. Yep, so oxidation and molasses type note to it. Not a whole lot of that water cracker, bruddy, you know, pale type malt. So those are covered up with a lot more of the aggressive aromatics that are kind of going on in here. Yeah, definitely good beer. Definitely true to style of Flanders Red. Um, also, I really like yes. this beer too, yes. so <laughs> any excuse I can get uh, to buy a bottle in a company car, I'll obviously do. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. Um, 
how is this? Are there things that you picked up that are, make a little bit more sense now? Um, does it help kind of yeah. honing in a lot of those flavor components? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, flavor's hard because it, it's hard to lecture on it, but like as you're eating it, like again, this is kind of getting those cues in, um, kind of getting you guys to be able to break down um, that complexity of beer and identify where those components are coming from. So I've got a couple more beers as we wrap. I'm going to keep facing some tests while we wrap beer. Float it over. You guys are taking a test? Uh, well, we've done like the sample tests so far. Uh, just to kind of work through them. Are those ones from the website? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Is there anything you guys want to know about the Cicerone exam or about? Sensory well, yeah, things. Yeah. More of the essay stuff. Like, what was the food pairing and all that stuff? Um, I have so a hard time thinking they're going to change the test. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You have to sign like a release form that I can't tell you the exact answer. Um, yeah, tell me this. Well, yeah, 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 the question asked was pairing. Like, how is that question presented? So it's, it's very good in the sense that they will tell you every little thing that's part of the food pairing. They're not just going to be like, oh, it's chicken wings. It'll be like, oh, it is a, a Thai dish with uh, yep. white, you know, chicken breast, with curry, with a moderate spice level, with coriander, with sage, with a cream base. With Like, they'll break down every single ingredient in there. And you just pick the beer to go with all that. And you pick the beer to go with it, yep. Um, which is great because admittedly, like I'm not a foodie at all, so being able to get some of that exact stuff was really nice. Because I don't, if you told me what like a weird dish was, I wouldn't be able to know what it is. But the second you list all the ingredients, I can probably figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would highly suggest you guys know different specialty malts and how they're made. Um, that was something I may or may not have seen on the test that I didn't expect. Um, Kilning, smoking, there's the caramel crystal malts, yeah. black patent malts, what makes those different, where those flavors come from, what flavors they bring to the table, what local bond ranges they're in, really? things like that may or may not be helpful to know. <laughs> um, the food is nice because no matter what you put, as long as you're able to talk your way through it, they'll give you points, which is nice. Um, just be in the, I mean, don't be an idiot. Like, don't, if it's super hot, like, don't be like, I should pair this with a double IPA. As long as you can kind of talk I about like it. I like you, though. Yeah. I want my mouth to be on fire for the rest of my life. Um, so as long as you guys can kind of talk your way through that, you'll be fine. Um, all flavors are really helpful. I know you guys are doing that next week, but a lot of people, that's one of the things like this where you, unless you taste it, you kind of, you can hear what it is all the time, but, so kind of equating those. My off flavors were very, very obvious to me. They spiked. They were spiked. They were spiked so high that one of them I walked into his room and smelled it. Oh. So like I knew exactly what it was. Was your controlled beer an Amstel or a Sam Light? Amstel Light. Amstel. Yeah. Um, oh, they'll tell you. Yeah, they tell you. Yeah, they tell you. Just that's where they seem to fluctuate. Yep. Yeah. Um, the my styles were really good too. Yep. For some reason, like I don't know if everyone's was that easy, but like my styles were between um, like a doppelbach and a foreign extra stout, and it was Guinness, so it was hydrogenized. So I was like, if anybody gets this wrong, then you should just be fired from the test. Yeah. We did that last week. I think. Uh, yeah. Heavy so so we uh, one of the things we've been doing is uh, like. And it's pouring your blind now, and we've been doing some of that style stuff, but that makes it way harder. Kind of Which is time. good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's like you know, Char Belgian Golden Strong and Belgian Triple. Yeah. Type of yep. Taste them. Tell me which one's which. Right. Really right. Difficulty, so. so it was good because I did the same thing where I trained way harder than I needed to be, yeah. and one of mine was like a Goza versus an American Beef. Um, they like to put English versus American IPA a lot. So if it's overly aggressive, citrusy, um, you know, fruit type notes. Um, the fish is served was pretty obvious too. Uh, they'll tell you if it's draft or not. So it's a nice thing if you see it's draft immediately for diacetyl acetic, any sort of lactic odd notes to it. Um, 
Well, sometimes they'll throw on styles that already have diacetyl in them and they'll spike them with diacetyl, so that's a watch out that I printed them. Okay. But um, it's definitely a passable test. You guys think I'm right here? You already took it once. I've taken it, yeah. Um, are you taking both or just? I'm not going to retake both. But I've been taking it the last time. So I'm How many did you miss? Oh, gotcha. It's one of those where like, I barely pass the case anymore. Then I saw 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I want to get the written score up a little bit. Yeah. So, like, um, so your style, what was, if you remember, or if you want to, what was your hardest one that, that they did? When we took ours, it was Blackout, Northern English Brown, or uh, Porter. It was our hard one. So I had Goza versus American Wheat. I had English IPA versus American IPA. I had, um, I want to say it was like a porter versus a porn extra stuff. Whatever it was, it was like I was given a Guinness. So I was like, this, yeah, this is obviously right. Um, and maybe a Doppelbach versus a Belgian Double might have been the other one. So slightly difficult, yeah. Because they'll change that up. That they'll change it up all the time, yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. That's, that's a separate sheet of based on the tester, as you can see, two yep. dark beers with the same Um. The one thing I wish I would have said, so I I was biased because I came from a brewing background and I came from a sensory background, so I didn't even study those, and I felt very confident on them. Um, the thing I wish I would have learned most, when I took it, they're like, don't really worry about that. The analytes, so this won't be tested on them that much. But I, so many analytes on my exam that I left being like, I think I failed this because I bombed the analyte part that bad. Um, what do you mean by analytes? They'll be like, what's the range of double IPA? Oh, that, yeah. uh, I would use, sure give an example of a black IPA, give an example of a beer that's brewed on the Rhine River, give an example of, so there's like, like what city are all beers brewed in? Like. So there's some very specific questions like that that I guessed right, but I wow. I did very, very well at every part of the test except that part. Did that guys, the part that we just handed back that everybody did terrible on, so did she and she still passed it. It's okay. Yeah. Don't let this section freak you out. It's good. It, so I did one of these before I took it too, and it's awesome because it, it was kind of like a gut check for me to be like, okay, you obviously don't know these as well as you think uh -huh. you do. Because you're going through flashcards and like, oh, whatever, like I know, you know, double RPAs and pop and regular RPAs and they're higher in alcohol and they have these characteristics. But until you sit down and have to write them out, I was like, oh shit, like I don't know as much as I think I do. And ask if I fell asleep on this page. So and don't get like I said, don't get screwed. I I blatantly bombed that part of it and still did well enough on my other sections to pass it by the analytics. Oh, I guess four years ago they were well. So that's what I was told, so I was like, whatever, I don't even know that. Yeah, four years ago the analytics was not there. Dude, yeah, that's not a math. That's a That was hard for me. Yeah, that's a little rough. Get down and what did you 